would happen if you put two children in grown men costumes in a room talking about football every week with a microphone. You're about to find out. Good evening. 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 I am proud and delighted to introduce you today to Unai Emery. Unai. Good afternoon. This is number 91. Yeah. 91 of a Touch Line Ramp podcast. Thank you very much for listening. My name's Luke, his name is Skinner. Been a big old week in the transfer gossip world. We're going to have a little bit about uh, modern footballers and their use of social media. We are, We're yeah. looking forward to that. The We're going to talk VAR. We are. Uh, Slash goalkeepers. Goalkeepers off their line. Uh, we'll call Bracket, that. Close uh, we're going to talk the end of an era at AS Roma as Francesco Totti left the club for the first time in 30 years. We don't do it often. Should we talk some United? We will talk United. I'm imagining that will come up in the speculation section, to be fair. Um, then we're going to have um, feedback and that usual malarkey. And then we're going to leave you all again. So thank you very much for, for downloading, for listening, to watching, to all of that. Don't forget to follow us on social media as well, at a touchline rant. Play the music. Across. Play the music now. Yep. It's that time of year again, isn't it? Silly season. See how that's worked out? It is the transfer gossip section, which is called Spec. Speculation. Speculation. So I'm going to throw out some transfers to you, mm -hmm. and I want you mm -hmm. to let me know what you think of them. Let's do it. So I'm going to throw out some transfer rumours. Speculation. Neymar. Yes. Okay. Neymar never seemingly um, but over the moon to be at PSG. But underappreciated. So yeah, massively underappreciated. But he's he never. Needs, he's, he's arm around him in a hug. Look, Neymar's turned up to PSG and thought, yes, yeah, it's, it's not anything special. I think he's realising now what a club Barcelona were. I think he's... I don't know. You see, what do you think? Because the rumour is, let me throw the rumour out, yeah, yeah. possible Barcelona return, but then, and this is the bit which is ridiculous, they've also linked Real Madrid to sign a Neymar. Like, Real Madrid have bought a lot it's of not, players for a yeah, lot of money. Not. That's not happening. Like, that's ridiculous. But Just, could you see... Look, say Real do go stupid and go, right, we'll sign Neymar too, and they spent 200 odd million on him. Yep. It's a very Real Madrid thing to do, but I do think, and I've said it before, I'm a big fan of the league and I'm a big fan of PSG. I think. So, okay, so where I see it, he's never been that happy though. Well, but he just needs certain requirements. So he needs to be the big, big fish in in a French pond. In a, small <laughs> in pond. a French pond. So <laughs> what you're looking at there yeah. is the youngest modern day superstar around, like considered that, that huge move at that age at that time where he needs this is the first we've seen so he's I think he's at the forefront and he gets a bad okay. bad rep for Do it you think then because he... I think ego is driven we all saw him uh, like in recent times with, with the latest fashionable goods yeah look he's um, paid a killing yeah he's made an absolute he, right kill. okay then let's move on to another one because we can't What's get into question? it do you think Neymar will stay at PSG or do you think he'll go I think he, I think he should he stay or should he go now? I think he should go because he should go. Real Madrid, there's a couple of them. Okay. Uh, have they signed they well? Wanna, they have signed well. They've oh, also they've this well. week been linked very heavily with Christian Eriksen from Spurs. Yep. Which I can see. We've said about that a number of times. We have. Now this also then links into they've signed very good players, and they've got a lot of attacking potential and they've strengthened their defence you know they've done well they have done well Mendy's a great sign in particular yep. I think it might just be a move too soon Gareth Bale has been rumoured to be going to buy him is that true or is it just speculation been, it's all speculation right. um, Bayern Munich I just, I just had to I just thought ahead to next, this week's video when I said that sentence right okay um, Bayern Munich which makes sense Why Gareth not? Bale has said that he doesn't want to go out on loan as well Robin well. and Ribery gone Robert, exactly. When I Wages. saw this today, and I thought Bayern Munich are linked with it, and I thought, yeah, that makes sense. Hummels no more. That makes sense, that, that transfer. I think if Gareth Bale was to leave Real, which I do think he should, then 
I think Bayern Munich is a very good shout. Are there any good golf courses around there? Though? I don't know. We'd have to find out. Firm tonight, as far as we can tell, is that Andre Gomez has made a permanent signing 22. to Everton. Twenty-two million pound for Andre Gomez is phenomenal business yep. by Everton. That is phenomenal for a talent of his level to owe in this market of overinflated fees to get him for twenty-two million is I, a steal. I think it's come with the laying in of that that um, loan, that season-long loan now. Yeah, yeah, it, but it's just phenomenal business that Everton have have managed to get Barca to agree to that when yeah. they agreed the loan. Um, this then links back. If we can, linked. If we can a minute, this then links back to uh, the Real Madrid Ericsson thing, and then Barca also. Sorry, uh, PSG have also been linked with Coutinho, which I think is interesting because if 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 Barca want to get Neymar back and Neymar wants to go back to Barcelona, seemingly at the minute, then then to say look, we will we'll, we'll take you, we'll take Neymar off you, but you take Philip Coutinho. To yeah, replace that him. could be an out. Yeah, I think that's that. The only it time this transfer makes sense because well, I don't be think like, it will look, happen. Look, take take Felipe. Well, look, the PSG board said yesterday, or, or the chief executive, or the owner, I can't remember who exactly it was, but someone very very high up at PSG said that he they'd be willing to sell Neymar this season, but it would just take a lot of money. Mm. Whereas he said we're not selling Mbappe. I think that's telling. Manchester United and their transfer policy, their current transfer, oh sorry, their recent transfer policy has been. Yep. To sign a big name player, to buy buy a star or a couple of star names, and then behind them sort of fill them up with you know, right? Okay, and okay, okay. The talent. Hang on, let me just finish. So what they've done this season, they've got, they they're being linked with players, uh, Aaron Wambazaka, young British talent. Daniel James is signed, young British talent. Issa Diop is being linked this week, fifty five million in the region of, uh, sixty million something like that. West Ham was seventy five, but. It shows a change in United's transfer policy to say what we're now going to do is we're going to buy the best young talents that are at established Premier League clubs. It's an interesting take. Mm. I'm not saying as a Man United fan that I agree with it or like it. I'm not saying that. I'm not giving an opinion. I'm just saying they have changed their transfer policy to be we're going to sign established Premier League players or from established Premier League clubs like West Ham, uh, like Leicester, as well as take a chance with Swansea and stuff. And say we're not going to buy stars. We'll call this little section TED Talks. Yeah. And what we'll do, we'll check in with Stats Bomb. We'll Stats check bomb, in with okay. Ted Knudsen and James Shout York. Out Stats bomb. What if we tweet them now? Okay. And then just see where they're at. Okay. Should I tweet them? Yeah. Okay. Right. Go into the tweets. Go into the tweets. All right. I'm going to say. At Touchline Run. At Touchline Run. Okay. <sighs> What do you make of United's transfer? But this is to at Mixnuts, yep. at Jair97. Stats bomb. And at Stats bomb. We've put, what do you make of United's transfer policy this window? Targeting young players mm. who are all the most promising talents of their respective established Premier League clubs seems interesting to us. Yes. <clears throat> do you want to hear what we, the reply? Yes, please. Okay. The reply that we got back was, we were very, uh, on the podcast today. So, uh, uh, that Edna Krabappel. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, and then we've gone back. Can't wait to have a listen. We're recording our thoughts now. Seemingly a very unlike modern Manchester United way of targeting buying players. Has us intrigued to see how it develops. Young and English. emoji. Uh, well, they've obviously, it's a Diop's French, so they've been linked with him. But Harry Maguire is the most... Most promising player at Leicester, and at Goldie, a young level, 25? I think twenty-five. So he's the most. He's that. He's potentially breaking into the top four level, potentially. Uh, so it's James Madison, and United have been linked with him as Mike well. Madison. Yeah. Um, Aaron Wan-Bazaka, it's, As we record this, there's reports coming out that they've th- agreed a fifty-five million pound fee. Do you think Pogba's left a bad Alice. taste in their mouths? Oh. You- <clears throat> Do you think Memphis Depay left another bad taste yeah. in Woodward's mouth? Well, look, they're two players who are brilliant, world-class you players. Wrecked. And they just haven't performed. Well, technically, this is an interesting thing with Paul Pogba, because technically he had his best season ever last season, statistically. Statistically, he's never scored that many goals got that, or got that many assists, and his XG was very high and his tackles win rate were very high. The problem is his work rate was down. 
Uh, yeah. There were times well, where he I was, don't want to get into a Pogba debate. But yeah, there were times the, with we've done Paul Pogba where we've he done just the Pogba thing. It's wandering around the pitch. Was so, that last uh, week? Mercurial <clears throat> talent. Yeah, he's just. But I just think it's that United lazy. system. He is lazy. Whoa. He is lazy. Whoa. Yeah. He is a very lazy player. I, I disagree. With when you. his head turns, he's lazy. Look, I watch United. I think every... it's the United system that the, that's no. to fault for that. Anyway, look, we've done this last stuff. Mercurial talent. Yeah. Paul Pogba is. World beater, world but cup yeah, winner, right. world cup winner. Yeah, lazy player. Nah, no, lazy. No. He literally saunters around. The, I could show you videos. Whose job is it to motivate the players? I could say, look. Well, he's had three. He's had two managers who haven't done the job. But it, there's an element of there is an element of you can't blame everything on the manager. I'd like to see him. Sometimes Ma- players turn up. And I'd just like to go, see him in Madrid. Where Madrid. do you think Paul Pogba suits? He's a Madrid player. Yeah, he is. Really is. He's a, he's a Real Madrid player. He's not. And where a, would you prefer Eriksen to go? Barcelona. But you could see him slotting into a Real Madrid team. I could see him slotting into Real Madrid. But I think genuinely, if I could pick, if I was, because I'm a bit of a purist as it you know goes to football. A purist. I would like to see Christian Eriksen at Barca if it was out of Real or Barca. But I would actually prefer to see him in a club like Juventus. I'd love to see him in events. Yeah, he'd but you're just absolute... a Juve fan, so... He had an absolute... He'd have a blast. <clears throat> he'd have a blast at Juve. And and even Bayern. Like, Christian Eriksen could easily take over from Ribéry or Robin. He could fit into any of the top clubs in Europe. Yeah, he's a great That's club. how good he is. So, th- that's the speculation this week. Would Hit. you stay or would you go if you were Eriksen? I would go. 100% go. Go. It's time to... If you're Christian Eriksen, now is the time to leave Spurs. Age-wise... Value wise, he's only got a year left on his contract. What are they touting him as? How much? Oh, I saw it right, 90 million. No, no, just like cash. About that. Oh. I know it goes against the. You wait, bringing it back to United, I know it goes against the grain of how things are being done at Man United this season. But I'd love to see Ericsson at uh, Ericsson at United. He's a great player. Right. Yeah, I, look, I, we've sung his praises all. Yeah. All right. Should we leave the speculation there? That, less, that's enough speculation. That's enough speculation. That's it's a enough. lot of speculation. Hit us up at a touch Ted by talks. Rant and tell us what you know, what you think. <laughs> Leaving Leon for Real because Danny Caballos is a very young, talented p- talent. He's an t- amazing world player. Think about Rodri. Real have rocked him. Have knocked it. That's one thing we didn't talk about was um, Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid this season, they are the Exodus. Right, Griezmann, Godin, um, Lucas Hernandez. There's maybe talk of Jimenez. Um, Quite a few of them are pretty old. Rodri, yeah, but Jimenez is quality. Like they should build the defense Oblak. around him. Uh, there's talk of all black one in a leaf. There's talk about um, them already giving up on Tom and Lamar. And getting him offloading Lamar. Uh, Diego Costa, there's talk of him going. Griezmann has said that he is leaving. Like, imagine that. Think of all those players. Yeah. And today, also, they're being linked. Um, AS, I think it is, in Spain, are saying that they are going to um, sign Jao Felix. They're going to sh- sign Jao Felix for £107 million. I'd say that's Simeone's greatest challenge if he stays. Massive. Think of those players that are yeah. leaving. There's, but they have got a history of, of, look, of young players, players coming Players that we room. know are leaving. Godin is leaving. It's been announced. Uh, Luca Hernandez is joining um, Bayern. Bayern bought him yeah. ages ago. Um, we know Godin is leaving. Diego Godin. He's going to Inter. Fucking Perfect. Inter Milan. They Perfect. haven't announced it yet. But Inter is, is where Godin is going. It's, it's pretty much done done deal. Um, Diego Costa, they want to get rid of already. So if you just They've only that. got... Look, Morata's on loan there. On the fence. And Nick was like, what, just hop over the fence into the enclosure? And he's like, yeah, no, you'll be fine. And he, she was like, are we allowed to do that? And he's like, well, I own the place. So, yeah. He's like, you're not allowed normally, but I own the place. And I'm saying you can, if you want to. So, Capybara. This is your birthday. Amir, Ka- so, we, uh, uh, we jump in. And this Cody Mendy, he went, I'll just call him. And I went, Kevin. And this fucking thing <laughs> comes running over. And it's got like this weird tapir-like nose yeah. with a massive tail. So, it's like a raccoon with a tapir's nose. Call just Kevin. Sniff, call Kevin. Comes to you when you call. Whistle and he rolls. 
I was like, what the fuck? Is, <laughs> what am I having a day? Like, I'm tickling the Cody Mendy now. And then he went, oh, we jump out. And he went, anyone of you ever held a skunk? And we're like, no. Do you want, and he was like, do you want to hold a skunk? Like, yeah, go on then. And he went, oh, okay. Then he jumps over the fence, gets in this enclosure, pulls out a fucking skunk, passes it to me. <laughs> And I'm holding, and I'm like, how do you hold the skunk? Is this thing gonna spray me? Yeah. And like, and this thing is up here licking me, and like sniffing me, and I'm holding it like that. And I was like, oh my god, this thing could fucking explode. And they went, it very rarely happens. Don't squeeze him, he don't like it. And I was like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Passed it to Nick, it was fine. This skunk is amazing. It smells like perfume as well, weirdly. It's really nice smelling, that skunk. I thought they'd stink. Then he takes us around the conception. He comes around the corner and then says, Right, have you ever seen a baby ferret? I'm like, no. Opens up another enclosure, jumps in, and this ferret and this mum has had like nine, <clears throat> a litter of nine ferrets. And he just passes us these baby ferrets. They're like this long, but ferrets. So we get all the ferrets out of the enclosure, sits us on a lawn, and it's me, Brian Kelly, Nick, Skyler, and Sydney, with like 20 ferrets. And all these baby ferrets, and they're like running up our tops and going in handbags, and they're like everywhere. Like, what the so much so, then he calls other people over, and says, Do you hold the ferret? It turns out there's like a group of 40 of us playing on a field with these group of ferrets in it, and the sun's coming down. It was fucking bliss. And then he hands us two caiman. <laughs> he literally said, Have you ever held a crocodile? And I'm like, No. And he's like, We got some caiman. Do you want to hold a caiman? And I'm like, what? Like a proper caiman? He's like, yeah. He hands us two of them. And I'm there with these two caiman. He's like, skunks to caiman. And he went, do you like being close together? Don't make any loud noises because they'll run. And don't squeeze them. I was like, oh my, it's brilliant. It's a great day. Dave the chicken. Did he roost? He roosted on my head. Just pick him up, put him on his head, and they'll bring, they'll bring out um, baby guinea pigs, mice, rats and all these things you just be given them tortoises just hedgehogs just and yeah you just cuddle animals just it's the, the happiest place in the world come on get in right we're talking modern football man. right you are modern footballers versus old school footballers <clears throat> Pogba versus Merson that's maybe what, yeah that's, that's exactly right okay um I just think that young players get a bad rep and there's more laws which have never we've never seen before in this modern society of ours. Almost like cyborgs. Cyborgs? And they're, and they're polished on social media. <laughs> also, there's an Eden Hazard one saying, great to be oh, a dear. car company here teaching the youth this, that and the other. There's no excuse for saying, in my day, you would have blah, blah, blah. Can I throw out another modern footballer thing that's come out today? Is it about which wages? I no. Another modern football thing that I love today is that Emerson at Chelsea said that Edin Hazard has left the Chelsea players WhatsApp group. I saw that. Yeah. And I thought, what a really modern thing. Like he said, Imagine I that, love you that's guys. That's a big commitment. Yeah, I love you guys. And he's left the Chelsea players group. <gasps> that's such a modern football thing, isn't it? I can't think stay of in my, the WhatsApp think of those group WhatsApp now. Groups. I don't, I don't, live, I don't live here no more. Think of those WhatsApp groups. I'd hey? love to be in Lingard's. Hey? I'd love to be in Jesse Lingard's. What's that, bro? Let's try and make that happen. Imagine what happens. Right, with Jesse Lingard, we want in on a WhatsApp group because I bet he's a right laugh. Let's try and make that happen. Um, so there's no... there's Look, it's trial and error, as is life. As is life, life. As is yeah. life. There's the things that you've said on social media. <laughs> oh. it's, it's your whole life documented. This now, we're documenting it. Do you know what I don't it's like all about social media? Is I don't like the way that some a, a, a twenty three year old adult can be criticised now because of how long Twitter's been around. They can find tweets from he was a, when yep. a very underdeveloped fourteen year old, say fifteen year old. No, no. No. Okay, as a human being, <laughs> not physically underdeveloped, I'm just slagging off these players, then. <laughs> um, they can bring up what he said when he was 14 and use it against him. Now it's like time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't develop this code. Should we end it there?
felt huge. This is the man who put the A in ATR. It's Mitchell Gad. Yeah, the AR. Yeah. We've both been watching the Women's World Cup recently. Yes. Yes. Uh, an instance happened. Two instances happened. It happened twice. Okay, so goalkeepers and VAR. Yes. If you're told, stay on your line, is it going to come down to what? Blades of grass? What is it? Yeah, the French what? one was very bad. Look. How? That's that's gone gone wild, in my opinion. Yeah, the French... Look, the, the first one was when uh, Jamaica's goalkeeper was judged to have been off the line when they played Italy for the penalty. And she was... She was a long way off the line. They're told to stay on their line. She was... M- a long Look, way off the line. What is next? I, the French is... one was very close, but the Jamaican one wasn't. So, okay, we choose the French one, yeah, as an example. Yeah. <clears throat> what level does it get at when they, that they've... Is it one foot on the line? What is that? What The setup of a goalkeeper in, in a penalty. They have, they They're have already to... at a loss anyway. It's a tough one to, to get right. I don't think they should be on their lines. I think maybe they should... Like, it just needs to be thought Tell broken what, because if you mess up the goalkeeper's first initial reaction, it also handicaps them further. So that's one of the aspects. Yeah. And the second is, at what point do you, can you, like, can you actually legitimately put one foot on the line and one foot off it? What is the situation there? I think there? it makes it more interesting. Remember those really different penalties they tried? Because what happens well. when it gets synced up in the run-up to the hitting the ball to them being on the line? Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, no, it's just the They're rules already, of the game. That's the problem. Like, and this is where... The already handicapped. But the there. problem that I have with this is that people, again, used it as this thing of, oh, VAR's ruined the game. No, VAR is just hmm. a replay of what happened. It's... It can't be wrong or right. It's just a replay. So it's... It's just new and it'll take getting used to. But, I don't like that... That goalkeeper aspect, though. I don't. It'll mess But that's mess the rule. That's the problem. That's not the VAR's fault. That's the rule. Yeah, but what stage do... You, this is the only time that I've apps, like been against VAR. But again, though, it's not VAR. That is that basically the goalkeeper... The rule is the, the goalkeeper needs... No, but I the, don't like that rule. Yeah, but that rule is already... So this is what I'm saying. That rule is it with or without VAR, goalkeepers need to stay on their line. That's a rule in football. And I've seen penalties retaken because it, they were a judge to have come off the line. Before VAR, all VAR is now doing is all those instances where it's 50 50, did, were they on their line or not? It's now become conclusive because you just go back to VAR, they've got goal line technology, and they're like, no, they're off the line. Well, they checked with VAR to, like, I know the rules in place, I yeah. get that, but when it comes down to. The problem is, VAR is, is, is constantly, so the referee is constantly getting told of incidents. So she, it's not just when she decides to call for VAR. This is what the people don't get. Is the referee doesn't stop and go, I want to see that on VAR. The entire game is being... So if it goes out for a throw, kit, a throw in, then it, she, they will say in her ear, oh, that's a throw into this team. And she, even if she's already made a decision, even if it's a clear decision, they constantly back up her decisions. So eventually there comes a point where, say like a goal, if it's offside and it's a judge to be offside, they say to the ref, we recommend you have a look at this incident and then they decide whether or not they want to take a look if they do they signal VAR and then they go and take a look and it happens at the, <coughs> and they can look, request I just don't like it it's just that but what it's I'm saying, petty yeah I know it's just that's it's again it's it's the it's the rules fault the rules are in fault here all VAR is doing is saying we well, have to abide by the rules now that's all it's saying so it's saying, I don't, I'm not saying I like it. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying you can't blame the technology because all it's doing is highlighting that people are breaking the rules of the game. If you don't like it, that's the way the game's going. Games are going to get, they're going to get less feisty. You have to be more precise. Yeah, it's like certain players, like Daniele De Rossi, does not work well in a world where VAR exists because he's a rough player, you know? <laughs> he's a natural thrust. <laughs> he's a rough player <laughs> didn't have to do that yeah so he's rough so on the other side of this then everyone's turning into Alan Ramsey that's what it is yeah everyone they're all turning into side into party everything. players they, that's the player now cyborgs no fouls you're never going to see Diego Maradona and Georgie Hadji taking lumps out of each other did you I see that I sent you that did you I did that you're not going to get that in this day and age because if you get those fouls now what happens is Vieira goes to yellow and the ref goes, oh, okay, it's a yellow. And then second one, bang, off, two yellows. You have to abide by the rules. It's making the game sanitised. Okay, so like we're, we're ahead 
because we understand the actual implication of VAR coming into play in the Premier League yeah. and the whole game will change completely. Yeah. The complexities will change. There'll be more drama then. More drama. Hello. Can I help? You have reached. Listener feedback. It's that time again. We've got listener feedback. Um, <coughs> we've had some good ones this week. Can I? St- have you had some? Yeah, I've had some. Can I start with mine? I've yeah. had some too. Yeah. Um, Platini's been in touch and he says, "Boys, Shawshank Redemption, me out of here. Uh, I've got the spoons already. Bring a poster." It's a bit cryptic. Uh, Lucy off of that Love Island. Yeah. Okay. She's called us both Bev. Okay. Uh-huh. Bev. And then Andy Gray has been on. And said, how can anyone be pro-VAR, you absolute clowns? I mean, it was just... A, <coughs> we were sort of bantering right. a little bit, weren't we? But, don't worry, don't you worry. Know. Go on then, go on, Bev. Um, Peter Runlove's been in contact. Yeah. He said, big, 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 love to ATR. Oh, thanks, Peter Runlove. So he used the word in love as... Nice, I liked it. Dean Saunders yeah. says, oh. I want to hear more about Jermaine Defoe to United. That is an interest. Gary Flickloff. <laughs> Gary Flickroft. <laughs> yeah. Gary has been in. He's in. Uh, he called up from Fraser Digby. He was on as well. He Fraser passed Digby over. So they're both Fraser they were like, Digby's they were like on friend. speaker. Uh, yeah. And they said, more stats bomb, please. Sad times this week. Is Sad it? Times. I don't think it is. You've got it, yeah. Well. Right, we'll give you two different viewpoints here. All right. Francesco Totti, after 30 years at the club that he loves and adores, mm. says that he has been pushed out the back door. Savior. He's been pushed out the back door by the American owners. He says they forced him out of the club. And he said, they forced me to retire as a player. And now they're forcing me to leave the club. They've, uh, they all they've wanted to do is get Romans out of Roma. Congratulations, you've succeeded. Because the Rossi's left and now Totti's off. Yep, that is someone who doesn't stand the word business in it's football. It's sad because football is now a business. It's no longer a labour of love. It's no longer a loyal thing. It's no longer. It hasn't. It hasn't got that. There's no loyalty. There's no, no loyalty there's in not. football. It's a no, you are right. There's no loyalty in football. But so players like, do you know like what, and right. I respect. I respect Totti as like Montella. They were my favourite favourite uh, Italian team to yeah. watch in the time. It's just a. It's a change in the guard, is what it is. Can change I give you an guard. opposition viewpoint here? Yeah. Okay. Speaking as a Manchester United fan, what Francesco Totti has done is say I don't agree with the ownership of this club. And I don't agree with it so much. I'm going to remove myself from it, which he genuinely doesn't want to do. He loves Roma, and he has said, "I do. I disagree with the ownership." So, as a Man United fan, I think, imagine if Bobby Charlton came out. Imagine the magnitude in this country if Bobby Charlton, as a director of Manchester United, came out and said, "I'm stepping down as director of football." He's synon- or as a director of this football club. He's synonymous with the Man United, Sir Bobby Charlton. Imagine if he said, I'm stepping down because I do not agree with the Glazers. Imagine the size of that. How big would that be in British football? Yeah? World football. Yeah. It's massive. You understand the and significance. And so, what was the quote? I so, saw the... I... Totti has come out and said that. That's the impact it's had in Italy. Because it's like, what do you mean Totti's not going to be at Roma? He's always at Roma. And he said, no, they forced me out of the club. Because I don't agree with the owners, I'm leaving. Well, we don't know the backstory. No, but it's just interesting. It's a massive story, and it hasn't been picked up enough in the British press for me because it's like it is like Sir Bobby Charlton leaving United. In in like it could be anything. It could be Totty just making it, kicking up a fuss in in a meeting room over something he's got no control over. It could be anything. He's like the the passion because he's a passionate guy and he's yeah. a, an absolute living Look, legend just... of Roma. I yeah, I just think it's, a, it's either, the, for me, we it's don't know. one of two things. It's we like, don't know. It's either incredibly sad that the owners have forced him out, which is one story going around. The other story is that Totti has resigned because he hates the owners. That's the real reasons behind this mm. decision. So there's two stories I've seen. So it depends on what your viewpoint would be. Do you think Totti has then, you know, stood up for what he believes in? Or do you think he's been sacked? <sighs> But, you that's know, it, right, purely that, speculating it. on that. Purely speculating on it. Hey, it's Mitchell Gard here, and if I'm not on ATR, I'm listening to ATR, so have a think about that. A 
July the 10th, live at Little Man. Coffee, Cardiff, it's us. Yeah. Uh, charity football quiz, come all mind. money going to mind. mind. So come along, buy your tickets now. Tickets yeah. are selling very fast, so get yours. Um, get yours as soon as you can. Got, got some good guests coming up. We've got, got some, some good, good guests coming up. Really good guests. Really good up. guests, thanks. Got a lot really to announce. Good. We've announced one in that next week we'll be joined by Heavy Mental Pod. Um, yeah, we've okay. announced that. We're going to the Heavy Mental Pod next week. And we're, uh, we're filming at Twin Maid. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, that's the only bit that we've announced so far. So I won't announce any more news of guests. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Well, thank you very much thank for listening. You very much. Hi, I'm Mitchell Gann. Whether I'm in the UK, Australia, Canada, Costa Rica, Timbuktu, I listen to Winnish. I listen to a touchline run. That's ATR. Yeah.